back in Super League that needs to be that needs to be breached. It's not the wide open playing field you get in in, in other sports in terms of where where the quality comes and goes to. Um, in terms of their turnover, I like the players that have come in. I think Greg Eden will have benefited from a year down in Brisbane. Um, Zach Hardacre comes with tremendous pedigree, and if they get him right attitudinally, then I think he's going to have a big year for them. Uh, Senna Lefeo, Jesse Senna Lefeo from Cronulla again, another young lad who's come in with some real NRL experience. Not so young anymore, at 27, is he? I've just realised. But anyway, he's young compared to me and you, Mark. Um, and I like the uh, I like the younger okay, players. That, I like well, yeah. I like the younger players that they brought in from London, which is from from the south with Igodo and uh, Igbin Ebian. That was well rehearsed, wasn't it? So they've recruited really well, and these are recruitments that match Daryl Powell's style of coaching and what he likes to do with players. And I think they've improved the squad in in that regard. I'm looking at the people that have gone, and with the possible exception of Luke Dawn. There's no real big losses for me there. The squad overall is littered with really talent, really talented players. Very, very strong pack. Um, some some really talented players there, particularly in the second row. Um, and I like, I even like them out wide, um, despite the loss of, uh, of of one Mr. D. Solomona. Um, we won't linger on on too much because I think there's plenty to be excited about in this 2017. St. Helens side. Carl Helens? Castleford, Castle, uh, Castleford side. I'm far more excited. I'm very ill. I'm very, I'm very, very ill. Let me carry on. Um, don't want to carry on too much without talking about the veteran Andy Lynch going into what feels about his millionth Super League season at the age of 37. So, Mr. Mr. Super League, it'll be tremendous to see him you know, play, play a role for those. And then some of these younger players like Minikin, um, and uh, and who's the other lad? The uh, the London at Meekin. There's some real talent in this squad, and they're an exciting oh, I love team. Meekin, yeah. the, the Newcastle United. Remember Newcastle United from about 1996, where it was we'll just score more. We'll just score more than them. They have some. There's some defensive questions that need to be <laughs> answered at Castleford, but they play a brand of rugby league that I, I every whenever they're on TV. I'm yeah. always excited, always happy to watch them play. And they very rarely deliver something that's below par in terms of entertainment value, one way or another. If they can get that right more times than, than they don't, I think they'll have a very strong year and I anticipate that they'll, they'll, they'll do well for themselves again this season. What does doing well for themselves mean? I don't think it's cracking the top four necessarily. I think it's being competitive and having a good run into the playoffs and the, and the Super 8s. Fair enough. Yeah, you've covered a lot of stuff there, actually. Okay. But um, I don't necessarily agree with what you said on recruitment. Right. 2017 does offer a real chance for Castle for, to get silverware, but every year has yeah. for the last three. Yeah. And they were surprising in 2015. The expectation is now there mm. after a couple of years of, of being the entertainers. Um, although I, I do suspect they may just sh- fall short. Mm. They've recruited well, I think. I think they've... They've recruited well, but to an extent they're treading water. So they have made some big losses, but they've made some big gains. Mm. L- they've lost Orm, but they've gained Hardacre. They've lost Solomona, but they've gained Eden. They've lost Mariano and Dewitt, but they've gained Senny Lefeo. I think in all those transactions, mm. they've kept the squad where it was yeah. at the start of last year to now. I mean, Denny Solomona did what he did, but Greg Eden could do that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he might not. He might be awful, but you don't. You just don't know. Um it's because of that that I can't really be that confident that they'll reach the promised land of silverware although I really wouldn't be surprised if they did find the success that all our listeners are predicting with the the cup final favourites yeah. tag that they've been uh, given by our by our listeners well no I think that's where they'll find success if they if they do need an avenue for for silverware I think it's more likely to come in the cup than uh, than in the league the key players for me Obviously, key player is Luke Gale. Yeah. This guy, this guy is you know Albert Goldthorpe medal winner for the last two years, I believe. Brings so much to this side, not just in assists but also in the tries he scores for them as well. He's everywhere for uh, for, for Castleford. Um, rising stars. I was tempted to go with Mike McMeekin, who I think is an absolute monster in the second row. But the guy I've plumped for is the uh, is the young uh, is the young centre Greg Minikin. I think he's a very very talented young man and another example of this quality London production line that Castleford have taken advantage of on two or three occasions. Greg Minikin. 
York. He's not from London, is he? No. No, he's from York. But I'll tell you Another what. Another Yorkshire player. He's been given a starting squad number. Yeah. It's on the wing, hasn't he? Which goes so, to show how highly yeah. they how they rate him. Maybe they're keeping him a little bit under wraps, keeping him out on the wing rather than playing him at centre. I prefer him in the centres, to be honest. But uh, Yeah, but they've got uh, almost a new signing in Michael Shenton in the centres, along true. with Jake Webster, who was phenomenal last year, arguably the best centre attack wise in Super League and don't forget Joel Monaghan year. as well so that, yeah he's probably down the packing order at centre isn't he yeah um, my key man is Luke Gale again um, I used to be careful with Cass because my pick for key man last year got a season ending injury and win game one <laughs> <laughs> oh the curse of Billy Woods but Luke Gale um, far and away the best best Super League assist maker last year 46 yeah, yeah. I don't think losing Solomon is going to be that hard felt if Gale repeats the performances he did with ball in hand yeah. last year. Um, young player, I've gone with Brandon Douglas. I remember he played two or three games towards the back end of last year. He's my rising star. Um, I think, in fact, it was just one game that he actually played, and I think he was on the bench but unused in another fixture. But he does face a lot of competition for places with a lot of the experienced guys ahead of him, but they had so many injuries last year that maybe they'll, they'll have the same sort of thing happen again. If they don't, they can push on. Yeah. But if they do, they might get a little bit held back again like they were last year. And, um, yeah, I think he showed a really good attitude and ability for the game and what I saw. So I, I'm hoping to see more from him. I'm so hoping to see him get minutes. You know, he's one of those ones that rises from being a player who's named on the squad list. Yeah to a player who gets in the 17 a few times and has a few impacts, a few 20 minutes here and there. Excellent. Well, exciting times for that young man. In terms of how the season pans out, then I've got Cass at fifth um, by the end of the regular season. I Look, I think if there was a time for them to crack the top four, it would have been to stay fit last year and then take advantage of the fact that Leeds and Huddersfield were so woeful. I don't suspect that that will repeat itself this year, so I'm going to keep them at fifth and then drop into sixth um, through the Super 8s, but uh, making it to the Cup final. I also have them pegged as... Do you have them running up, runner up then in the Cup final? Or? Oh, I think so, yeah. But once you're in the Cup final, though, it can go either yeah. way, but I, I do have them as Cup runners-up. I have them pegged the same as Cup runners-up. Um, I actually have them as fifth as well after the regular season but I have them going the other way right. possibly for a little bit of hope for them that they don't get the same injuries that they got last year in that crucial period because actually if you look at the performances results wise yeah. over the last two seasons of this newer structure Castleford have been one of the the boom teams in that in that final section mm. when, when they've got all the players on the pitch they can beat everyone and anyone and I hope for them that Lynch and Junior Moores are on the pitch way more often than they're off the pitch at that stage. If you throw into that Massey getting fit for that end part of the season and get McMeekin on the field every week, that's a formidable, exciting, attacking unit. So I'm going to have them finishing fourth and getting into the Super League semi-final. Hey, and from then on, it's, uh, it's a bit of a crapshoot. It's, it's knockout football, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. Okay, well, we've got a lot of fan, uh, fan um, feedback on this one to see how they... To say how they think their uh, Tigers are going to do Very that. positive. Thanks, gents. You all kept it quite brief as well, which helps me feel a little bit under the weather. Lee Wheeler uh, said, Challenge Cup victory and a solid top four finish. Tyler Cass fan says, Challenge Cup finalists, top four, but not to make it to Old Trafford. Luke Williams says, A Challenge Cup and or grand final place and to lift one of the trophies. I am very optimistic about our chances this season. Joe Boyd says a third place finish for Castleford. Alan Marchant says exciting times to come in 2017. Got great depth this year. Top four and some silverware. Ashley Taylor says I expect great attack as always but better defence than previous years. With few or no injuries we could get into a playoff semi-final and go pretty far in the cup. Di Evans thinks she'll finish third. Peter Marley says compete all season and win silverware. Um, a lad called Kevin says top four Nick, uh, he says fourth and Ollie Smith, good to hear from you mate says I'd like us to win some silverware and finish in the top four pretty uh, general consensus there some, um, some excited people in Castleford OK, so moving on from Castleford then, we come to the boys at Langtree Park St Helens um, and how we think things are going to go for them. They were fourth in Super League, despite um, being a bit shaky at times, and they finished fourth in the Super 8 with a sixth round appearance in the Cup. So, 
What do you think to this St. Helens team going into 2017, Mark? Well, there's a big edit thrown into this Massive. Uh, sort of last minute, but Massive. Um, I'll, I'll read through my sort of notes that I'd made before and then touch on the edit. Although Warrington and Hull FC might have something to say about this, I actually feel that Saints have the best front row in the competition going into 2017. And then with the additions of Walker and Douglas to round out that forward pack, um, I think that that's massive with what they already had there in the, in the first place. Yeah. Turner and Vey are the only real losses to me, but I do think they've been adequately re- replaced when you look at Morgan um, there and obviously... Douglas and Walker, plus the the youth being promoted into the forward pack that that we've been seeing going on. Joe Greenwood getting a starting number, for example. Yeah. In the Smith signing, the Matty Smith signing, I feel that they have a player far more suitable to their current style of play than the outgoing Luke Walsh. Mm. As critical as you can be about the player's style, about his playing style, about his creativity, about what he does, about his, you know spark or whatever you might want to term the thing that you don't know how to define as um, he brings an organisation and a winning track record to Saints behind their pack with the speed and skill that they do have in the outside backs when they're all fit I mean they are weapons in Lomax the cartoon dog and Makinson yeah. and then the best hooker getting the ball to him quickly plus that forward pack, I think it'll be a different maker to Saints, a massive different maker to Saints, than the edit to that is, if his injury isn't worse than first, even worse than first feed, or as bad as first feed, suspected broken leg mm. from the friendly game against Witness. Well, I think it's been confirmed as a broken leg. Has it been confirmed today, now? Yeah. Last time I read, there was no, no confirmation of that, but that's, you're talking two months then, aren't you, with a broken leg, probably three months maybe, um, for, for a player like him. I don't expect Saints' style of play to improve. I don't expect them to become more glamorous than they've been over the last three or four years. No. But I do expect them to pull off what they do best more consistently mm. and more successfully than the last two years in bigger games because of Matty Smith. Yeah. And if you're going to break your leg, do it early doors and come back for the business end of the season. Rather than the Walsh style of get everyone excited then and then get the hurt. season, yeah. Saying that, if any team can win trophies without half backs, it's St. Helens. St. Yeah. Helens. yeah, exactly. No, I, I agree with a tremendous amount. I bet they wish you kept hold of Jordan Turner now. Um I agree with Well with, they've got um, with everything that Tommy you Tommy Lee I was gonna say maybe he wants to be a, he wants to challenge for a hooking spot, but he's gonna to have to play a lot of half back in this year. He's, for who? For who have they got a dual red relationship with? <laughs> Well, who else are they putting in? Exactly. Um, okay, this is an insane pack. I, I'm very excited to see this, uh, the additional go forward that they've brought in to what was already a really powerful front row and just, just a group of forwards that were on their day just devastating runners of the ball. So I was really excited to see the platform that they were going to lay for someone who's in game kicking is as, as pinpoint and accurate as, as Matty Smith's. Hopefully, that he's not too seriously injured and can come back. It does present an opportunity for, you know, this St. Helens have a massive conveyor belt of young players. There's the, There will be a young kid that could step in and, 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 you know, get some game time on the back of this. So it's not always cut and dry, black and white, what terrible news. This does present an opportunity for someone to get some minutes. Um, and like you said, they've got some quality outside backs. The way this St. Helens team is going to look to me is, is bulldozer, 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 ball out the back and, you know get it out wide or just run it out. They, that's their two options really now, isn't it, at the moment. Um, and they'll do it very well. At the well. moment, that's... That's what they do. Yeah. That's, that's, but it's not the most exciting brand of rugby league in the world, but it's consistent and it gets them and it gets them points and it gets them into semi-finals in all competitions, I think. So, yeah, the, big shame for Matty Smith, um, but what they've done is make themselves even more powerful and more frightening to look at, which will serve them well, I think, in the coming year. Yeah, I've got the key man. This I'm back to best player now on the on this group with with my key man choice. It's James Roby. Right. Um, without him, none of what the others can do matters anywhere near as much. It's that simple. He, he's that good. He's that important for me. There are plenty of uh, good young forwards that I feel are ready for first teamers that are already first teamers. You know, like um, Richards and Thompson, and even like Jack Ashworth maybe and Morgan Knowles. Yeah. But 
that means that I'm going to pick as a rising star someone who I think will come from nowhere to maybe get the odd game this year. Oh. And it's someone in the outside backs instead of one of those more established names because I think they're kind of where they're at. Okay. This guy, though, Regan Grace, is who I'm picking. 